Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a rusty vintage tin sign effect in Photoshop. You can download the project files to see how everything was put together and have files to work with if you don't have any of your own. Let's get started. So here's our new document which is 1600 by 1280. And the first thing that we need to do is fill this background in with a different color. So I'm going to double click my background in the layers palette and give it the name background. Then I'm going to come over to my foreground color picker and I'm going to choose a nice brick red color. The hex code for the color we're going to use is 442623. Then I'll press G to select the paint bucket tool and fill that background in. Next I'll double click that layer in the layers palette to open the layer style dialog. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a pattern overlay. Now the pattern that we're going to use is called rough and you can find it in the Photoshop default patterns by clicking the little gear icon here and loading in the erodible textures pattern pack. Next I'll set the blend mode to overlay and change the opacity to about 25% and that'll give us a nice rough looking rust texture in the background. I also want to give it an inner shadow using the color black and the blend mode set to color burn. I'll change the distance to zero so our inner shadow is not offset and then increase the size to about 100 pixels. Next I'll change the opacity down to about 15%. That'll give us a nice inner shadow around the edges of our texture. Lastly I'll add an inner glow and I'm going to choose the color white. And first I'm going to increase the noise all the way up to 100% and set the source to center. And then I'll change the size down all the way to zero and that's going to give us some noise across our entire image. Then I'll change the blend mode to color dodge and decrease the opacity to about 20%. And that will make our background just a little rougher looking. And hit OK. Next I'm going to create a new group and name it Tin Sign. And I'm going to open my project files and drag my artwork into my document. And hit enter to place it. So I want to move that down and make sure it's in my Tin Sign group. And then I'm going to click the actual Tin Sign group and add a layer mask. We're going to use some Photoshop brushes to mask off our artwork to show through the rust texture that we created at the beginning. So I'm going to press B to select the brush tool and you'll see up here that I have some brushes already loaded in. The first one that we're going to use is a torn paper brush that you can find in the project files. So I'm going to resize that using the left and right square bracket keys until it covers just the width of my image. And I'm going to zoom out a bit here. And using black and on my layer mask, I'm going to paint just the edge of that layer mask to let my rust texture show through. You'll also need to open the brush palette to flip and rotate your brush to paint on your mask at the top and the sides. Now that we've done the edges, I want to add some more brush strokes to the corners to make it even rougher looking. So I'm going to click on these watercolor brush strokes which I've loaded in and you can find those in the project files as well. And again I'm just going to resize those and paint on my canvas to make the rust texture show through just a little bit more in the corners. Next I'm going to come over and create a new solid color fill layer. And we're going to use this to sepia tone our image a bit, so we want to choose a nice orangish color. The hex code for the color we're going to use is BD8440. You want to make sure that this solid color fill layer is above your tin sign layer group. Then we'll set the blend mode to color and the opacity to 20%. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that it adds just a slight sepia tone to our entire image. Next I'm going to go into my project files and I'm going to drag in my texture. Before I place it I'm going to resize it to cover the entire canvas and then hit enter to place it in my document. Next I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer and click this little icon here which is going to clip that adjustment to just my texture making only my texture black and white. Then I'll select my texture layer and set the blend mode to overlay. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that it adds a nice grunge texture across my entire image. Next, I'm going to create another layer group, and we're going to name this one Rounded Corners. Then I'll select all of my layers and press Control right square bracket to move all of those layers into the Rounded Corners layer group. With the Rounded Corners layer group selected, I'm going to come up and click Layer, Vector Mask, Reveal All to add a vector mask to my layer group. 
Then I'm going to come over and choose the rounded rectangle tool. I want to make sure that I have path set and the options for my rounded rectangle tool and make sure that I have my vector mask selected in the layers palette. Then I'll click on my document and make this rounded rectangle the same size as my canvas. So 1600 by 1280 and we'll leave the radius set at 25 pixels and hit OK. So you can see we've created a vector mask but it's not in the right spot. So I'm going to come over and choose the path selection tool and click on my vector shape and then drag it to the top corner of my image so it snaps into place. So if I deselect everything, you can see that our sign now has some nice rounded corners. I'm going to come over now and choose the ellipse tool and make sure that I have the vector mask selected again. And up in the options, I still want it set to path, but I want to set the path operation to subtract front shape. So if I click in my canvas and create a 25 pixel ellipse, you'll see that it subtracts that shape from my vector mask. Then again, I'll come over and choose the path selection tool and select that circle and move it into place in the top corner. And that's going to be used to simulate the holes that our sign would hang from. Now with that path selected, I can press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste it and drag it anywhere else on my image to have a duplicate hole. So I'm going to drag that to the top right corner and use my arrow keys to nudge that into place. And then holding shift, I'm going to select the original circle so I have both of them selected and press Ctrl C to copy them and Ctrl V to paste both. With both of them selected, I can click and drag them down to the bottom corners and move them into place. Lastly, I want to add a bevel and emboss to my overall sign to make it look a little more 3D. So I'm going to double click the rounded corners layer group in the layers palette to open the layer style dialog. And I'm going to select bevel and emboss. I'm going to set the size to just 2 pixels. Then I'll change the highlight mode from linear dodge to color dodge and increase the opacity to about 65%. You'll want to set the shadow mode to linear burn at 25% using the color black. So if I hit OK and zoom in on the top corner of my image, you'll see that I have a slight highlight along the top edge and the holes in my sign have a little 3D look to them. The cool thing about this is that we've essentially created a template that can be used on any other images. All you have to do is go into the tin sign layer group and you can drag any image into your document and it will automatically have all the masking and effects applied. Now that I've dragged this flower image in, you can see that it has all the same effects as my original artwork. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.